Today we will be discussing about SIS, saline infusion sonography. What saline infusion sonography is? It is infusion of saline into the uterine cavity to assess the, it is majorly the use of SIS was to evaluate the cavity. But the second use of SIS came out to be the tubal evaluation. We will be discussing this later on. So coming on to the indications, first is the cavity evaluation, which is a prime indication for SIS, the cavity evaluation. And second is the tubal evaluation, which is a secondary indication for SIS. What are the contraindications? It, they are all the more same as HSG. So any active PID, because we do not want to introduce any infection which is already present, we do not uh, want to increase that infection. That's why we will not do any procedure when the active PID is there in the premenstrual phase. Why we will not do in the premenstrual phase? Because patient can be pregnant. So that's why we do not want to dislodge that uh, pregnancy. So that's why we will not do in the premenstrual phase. Although it is also ultrasound guided, unlike HSG like uh, where the radiation exposure is there, there is no radiation exposure. But if the pregnancy happens, that pregnancy we do not want to uh, affect that pregnancy. So that's why we will avoid any procedure in the premenstrual phase rather in the postmenstrual phase. Once the menses uh, get over after two to three days, we can do the SIS just like HSG. Any recent DNC? and any undiagnosed pregnancy. So all these conditions we will not do SIS. So what is the best time to do SIS? As I already told in the postmenstrual period, once the periods get over and the patient is done with her bleeding, after two to three days we can do the SIS. What, what actually is SIS? SIS is introduction of the saline into the uterine cavity that will lead to distension of the uterine endometrial cavity. So how usually it is done? It is done usually uh, by different people will do it in the different way. Some people will take the number 8 Foley's catheter and they will introduce the Foley's catheter into the uterine uh, cavity into the endometrial cavity and uh, fill it with 1 to 2 cc of saline and give the traction over the uh, the internal loss till the internal loss that balloon will be kept and uh, then the uh, the some amount of saline is infused inside like uh, around uh, 10 ml of saline because usual endometrial cavity volume is around uh, 3 ml so that 10 to uh, 12 ml of saline up to like 15 ml is enough to see the uterine cavity so once uh, this is done, th there is another method to do SIS, which is little less painful. That is to do it with IUI catheter. So if uh, like IUI catheter, it will be less painful as compared to the uh, the balloon because uh, when we put the uh, when we put the Foley's catheter there because of that balloon, sometimes patient feel pain. So that's why IUI catheter is, and there are some special catheters also come for uh, spe uh, specially designed to do SIS. But because uh, the it's very easily available IUI catheter, that is usually the most commonly used method to do SIS. So now I'll be showing you some uh, pictures of SIS. So what is the um, normal SIS? Like normal picture of SIS, this is, a, this is a sagittal section of uh, uterine cavity. This is the endometrium and uh, this is the uh, the fluid which you can see this black one is the fluid so another reason to do SAS during the post menstrual period is because this endometrial endometrium will be thin endometrium is thinnest during the the post menstrual period so that is one of the reasons if you do it in the premenstrual uh, period the endometrium will be thick and uh, it might mimic like a polypoidal endometrium which actually is not so that is also one of the reasons that we do it in the in uh, post menstrual period so this is the normal sis sagittal section of the uterus so uh, when we compare tvs uh, with the sis as you can see here it is tvs and the, when the saline is instilled into the same uh, cavity, it will look like this. So this is how the balloon will look like. This, this is SIS which is done with the, the Foley's catheter. So balloon is at the internal loss. So you can see here a few polyps. Like this is polyp, this is polyp. And when we put the color Doppler, even the feeding vessels can be seen. Here like if uh, we have put the color Doppler and feeding vessel is being seen. Here you can see the submucosal fibroid. The clear capsule of the fibroid can be seen. So it is a submucosal fibroid and which is arising from the anterior wall of the uterus.
and here you can see these white white are the air bubbles sometimes some air bubbles come along with the saline and uh, this is the fibroid is there another picture from the posterior wall this uh, you can see the fibroid this is also uh, the picture of fibroid and here you can see some uh, degeneration which is happening within the submucosal fibroid so type 0 and uh, type 1 and sometimes type 2 also so especially type 0 fibroids the figo 0 fibroids they will be very easily seen in the sas sometimes uh, the uh, the figo 2 fibroids which we are not able to make out figo 2 fibroids which we are not able to make out on tvs when we put saline the indentation of the cavity can be seen so especially in type 2 fibroids the sas is helpful so here you can see the adhesion band as you can see here the adhesion band can be seen in the endometrial cavity here also same the adhesion band this is a thin adhesion band and this is the thick adhesion band which you can see almost this the two uterine cavities have are totally like adhere to each other so another role of uh, sas is it is SAS is a surrogate of uh, uh, 3D ultrasound can also be done with the uh, with SAS and it is a surrogate of hysteroscopy like you can replace SAS with the hysteroscopy when the findings when you do the correctly done when the SAS is correctly done it is a very good method to replace hysteroscopy like here we have done the here you as you can see the 3D, 3D ultrasound has been done and you can see this septum very clearly because the uterine cavities the fluid has distended into the uterine cavities and you can see the septum coming in the in the coronal section of the uterus so it's very clearly visible here another role of sis as i told you uh, previously it was used only for cavity evaluation but nowadays sis is used for tubal evaluation also but there are some issues involved with uh, uh, using it for tubal evaluation uh, we will be discussing that but the, there is another uh, this is very important thing like sometimes the tubal evaluation can be done with sis only so there is when you will putting the fluid uh, inside the uterine cavity this clearly waterfall sign this is known as waterfall sign clearly the fluid will come in the pouch of douglas and you can see the fluid coming from the uterine cavity into the fallopian tube and then the fallopian tubes can be seen floating into the into the pouch of douglas this because normally fallopian tubes we cannot see on ultrasound but when there is some fluid collection is there as you have you might have seen during the ovulation because sometimes the fluid comes and the tubes become very apparent the fimbrial end you can see the same way when the fluid we put and it has uh, it has come in the pouch of douglas the tubes can be seen floating so and uh, there is one more sign which is uh, this floral sign can come this can when you put doppler along with that fluid when this fluid here the fluid is coming the and you put the doppler here this floral sign can be seen which is a marker of tubal potency so now uh, what are the problems why sis is not so as famous as hsg or hysteroscopy so because it's a it is a form of ultrasound and it is very user dependent like the performance of the sis is dependent on the person who is doing it so the, sometimes the interpretation becomes very difficult and we cannot see where, what the site of block is like in hsg we can see the site of block but here we cannot determine the site of block and uh, sometimes uh, sometimes it can diagnose the tubal uh, peritubal adhesions but not always it's very difficult to diagnose peritubal adhesions and mobility of tubes all these things are very difficult to diagnose with sis when compared to other methods like hysterolaparoscopy or uh, hsg and the findings are as i already told very subjective so and another thing there are high false positive results in massive hydrosalpings very big hydrosalpings we will be thinking that fluid is there but that is uh, actual not a free spill or the typical waterfall sign but what are the advantages the water advantages are like it's an office procedure it's a very easy procedure no radiation exposure patient doesn't need any anesthesia and it's a very well tolerated procedure and it can and it uh, is very cost effective also you do not need any anesthesia and it is uh, like it's a reproducible procedure you can do it again 
and it's very less time consuming it's the only 5 10 minutes procedure and uh, without any radiation exposure so it, there are many advantages of uh, uh, sis and uh, regarding the tubal evaluation one advantage is, is suppose if one tube is already blocked if only one tube is uh, patent to reconfirm that thing if they if you do sis that is a confirmation uh, that the tube is patent like already we have uh, we know that uh, history of salpingectomy is there for example patient had tubal pregnancy and there was salpingectomy was done and now the because uh, we want to see whether that one tube which is remaining it's patent or not that time you can do sis because if you first do sis if you first do tbs there if there is no fluid then you put some fluid in the endometrial cavity then again you do the um the tbs and if the presence of fluid in the pouch of douglas confirms that there is the tube is patent so in such conditions where we already know the tube is blocked the sis can be a very good method and can avoid other tubal evaluation methods like hsg and hysterolaparoscopy all these things it can be avoided in such patients so it is especially very useful in such patients so the disadvantages as i have already told there can be tubal spasm like when we are putting the fluid there sometimes this tubal spasm can happen and uh, that might lead to falsely uh, we can we can think like it is the tubes are not uh, tu patent and they are blocked uh, just like hsg and uh, sometimes and one another disadvantage is we cannot make out the side of the tubal blockage if uh, the both tubes are blocked or like we cannot make out the site where uh, if the fluid has come it is it means that both the uh, side of the tubes are open we cannot make out which right is blocked left or blocked that we cannot make out so these are some advantages or disadvantages of sis but overall i feel sis is a very good surrogate of hsg as and uh, hysteroscopy because it's a um, least invasive procedure for tubal and cavity evaluation so wherever it is required we should ideally do sis uh, which we are not doing but we should very less people are there who are doing uh, sis mm, most of the people are going for hsg hysterolaparoscopy and all these things but i personally feel sis is a very good technique if done properly so thank you